It's April 23rd, 2019. A highly anticipated Game 7 between the San Jose Sharks and the Vegas Golden Knights has actually been surprisingly lopsided in Vegas' favor. With a 3-0 lead and 10 minutes left, Vegas should close out this game easily, barring any unforeseen problems. But sometimes, that's just not how hockey works. Heading into this Game 7, this series had been a complete roller coaster. The first six games didn't disappoint at all. San Jose looked unstoppable early with a convincing Game 1 win, but the Vegas Golden Knights stormed back to win the next three games and pushed the Sharks to the brink of elimination. San Jose refused to die, however, and won Games 5 and 6 to bring us to this winner-take-all matchup. Early in this game, San Jose pressed, but Marc-Andre Fleury was on another level. It looked like one of those games where if he was seeing the puck cleanly, he was stopping it. Unfortunately for the Sharks, Vegas was capitalizing on their chances whenever there was an opening. It seemed like every golden opportunity that the Sharks got was denied and directly followed by a Vegas goal. With one goal being scored in the first and another added in the second, San Jose desperately needed the third one to swing the momentum back in their favor. So three minutes into the third, San Jose came within inches to getting their goal, but the puck hit the post and somehow stayed out. Not even a minute later, Max Pacioretty put a dagger into the hopes of every Sharks fan. With 16 minutes left to go in the third, Pacioretty's shot would beat Jones cleanly five hole to bury the Sharks into a three nothing hole. The crowd was silent and completely shocked. This game belonged to the Vegas Golden Knights, but with a 3-0 lead and 10 minutes left, we would get one of the biggest turning points in playoff history. 10.54 to go in the third period. Face off, one back to Burns. Oh, Pavelski was dropped. And Cody Eakin's gonna get five in the game here. Off the face off, Cody Eakin would shove Sharks captain Joe Pavelski. An awkward collision after caused Pavelski to land hard on the ice. Eakin was assessed a five minute major penalty and a game misconduct for cross checking, but it wasn't the right call. You see, at a quick glance, the refs thought that Eakin cross checked Pavelski in the head and that warranted a major penalty. But if you rewatch the play, you'll see that Eakin didn't get Pavelski's head at all. He actually got him in the chest. Now, in the present NHL, if there is a major penalty, the referees have the ability to convene, review it, and assess if it is still a major penalty or if it should be reduced to a minor. But that's all thanks to this moment right here. Because during this moment, that rule didn't exist. If the call was a major penalty, it couldn't be reviewed. The NHL would fix this the next offseason as they introduced the ability to review a major penalty called on the ice, courtesy of this exact moment. With the review, this most likely isn't a penalty, and what happens next likely doesn't happen at all. Shoots that block, the bank sends it back across, the two scores! Carlson, Carlson along, Risha, two scores! Swings it back across, the two, and two scores! The Panthers tie the game! Way in, the walks it in, fires, scores! The Sharks have taken the lead! Absolutely unbelievable. Four straight power play goals. Sometimes all it takes is an emotional spark to change everything. After the whole Pavelski incident, veteran Joe Thornton made it clear what the response for the Sharks needed to be. According to Logan Couture, Thornton said that you guys need to go out and get f three goals right now. So naturally, the Sharks got four. San Jose rallied around their captain and not only came all the way back, but took the lead. Horrible officiating, yes. Bad penalty kill, absolutely. But this was a reminder of how fast momentum can swing in hockey. In a game filled with X's and O's, sometimes emotions and mindset can alter the entire outcome of a game. Vegas's penalty kill percentage in that season was hovering around 80%, and that was good for middle of the pack in the league. For them to give up four straight power play goals is pretty much unheard of. The NHL playoffs are all about resiliency. The Sharks showed their resiliency when Pavelski got hurt, and now it was time for Vegas to do the same. With everything seemingly going against them, Vegas wasn't going to go away easy. With the goalie pulled and the extra man, a set play down low allowed Vegas to find March Soul in the bumper spot and tie the game. This of course would set up Game 7, Sudden Death Overtime. With back and forth golden opportunities at both ends for 19 minutes of play, 
each team had ample opportunity to end the game. With the clock winding down, the puck would find itself onto the stick of two-time Norris Trophy winner Eric Carlson. And while this might seem like a nothing play with Vegas having four guys back, Carlson sees offensive opportunities when others can't, and he knows he's got a streaking Barkley Goodrow on his right. He knows that this could very well be the right play. So after being down 3-1 in the series, then 3-0 in Game 7, and losing their captain to a scary injury, this Sharks team has been through hell and back to get to this moment. With the Sharks fighting for their playoff lives and their captain's honor, you're about to witness one of the most electrifying comebacks in NHL history. And he comes, throws to the head, good drive alone! So where would you rank this game in terms of all-time comebacks and recent memory? There's always been controversy surrounding this one game because of that blown call. If that rule is implemented during that game seven, that likely isn't going to be a major penalty. And who knows, Vegas probably hangs on. But at the end of the day, Vegas still let in four power play goals and they just couldn't stop the momentum that the Sharks had going. Anyways, drop your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you want to see more NHL breakdowns, click on any of the links right here.